Spiral machining is a high speed machining technique which eliminates the use of step downs and step overs usually found in traditional toolpaths. It is these step downs and step overs which cause the machine tool to slow down and then re-accelerate as it negotiates the step down or step over. This step down and step over can also lead to dwell marks or witness marks being left on the finished part which would then require extra hand finishing to remove. So by adopting a spiral style strategy we can usually keep the machine tool running a lot smoother and a lot faster thus reducing the cycle time with the added benefits of also eliminating these dwell marks or witness marks as there are no step overs or step downs to cause these. Pamel has many spiral options associated with both roughing and finishing toolpaths. So in this example we're going to be go, th go through the machining of a simple cavity mould from roughing to finishing and looking at some other spiral options we can use. The first toolpath we're going to create is based upon a hole feature and that is a helical drilling operation. This is a drilling operation not with a conventional twist drill but with a milling tool and instead of plunging straight down in Z we're using a helical motion to produce the hole. This is an ideal strategy for producing holes in hardened steel blocks with solid carbide milling tools and is typically done with a ball nose tool or a tip radius end mill. In this example we can see in the viewmill simulation the helical action of the drilling operation as the tool works its way down to the bottom of the part. This hole is going to be used as an entry hole for the next operation which is our spiral roughing toolpath. So on our area clearance form we have the ability to specify a spiral offset rather than a conventional offsets. On the advanced page of the form we can switch on spiral and apply the toolpath as normal. Now for this example we've actually used a technique known as high efficiency roughing or side milling. This is where instead of conventional roughing where we start at the top of the block and work down and take a small depth of cut we actually produce just one pass at the bottom of the part and take a very large depth of cut but a very small radial depth of cut. So this technique typically will be using a depth of cut equal to one and a half to two times the diameter of the tool. But the radial cut would be typically equal to 0 0.05 or 0 0.1 times the diameter of the tool. This technique maximizes the, the flute length on the tool so that more of the flute length is engaged. And by doing this we can typically use a much higher feed rate and much higher spindle speed and shave the material off very quickly and very efficiently. Again, this type of roughing technique is very suitable for solid carbide tools in hardened steel material. And by utilizing the spiral option, as stated before, we eliminate the deceleration, deceleration and acceleration of the machine tool as it has to negotiate the step over.
for finishing this simple cavity we're going to use a constant Z toolpath for machining the steep areas and to prevent the tool from machining into the shallow areas which is not a good strategy for constant Z we're going to use the block to limit the depth again on the constant Z toolpath we can switch on the spiral option and we're going to machine from the top working our way down to the bottom of the block using the spiral technique so when we look from the side we can see the spiral motion with no step downs To finish the remaining, the remaining shallow region of the mould, we're going to use uh, a 3D offset style strategy. But to prevent the 3D offset overlapping the already finished constant Z region, we're going to extract the last pass from the constant Z toolpath and convert that into a boundary. This boundary will then be used by the 3D offset toolpath as a starting point. Again, we're going to switch on the spiral option and apply the toolpath. Now, by default, 3D offset will start on the boundary edge and spiral into the center of the boundary. In our case, because the the boundary edge is near the vertical region of the cavity which has already been finished by the constant Z we do not want the tool to start at this position as there is a chance that when the tool moves down to the start point it could rub and leave a mark on the finished vertical region so to prevent this we're going to reorder the toolpath to start in the center and work its way out to the edge of the part. Again we're using the spiral option and we're maintaining a climb cutting motion at all times. Whenever we're high speed machining, especially in hardened steel, we always want to try and use a climb cutting condition as this will generally give us less vibrations, a better cutting conditions and ultimately a better surface finish.
So instead of using two separate toolpaths to finish the cavity, we can, as an alternative, use what's called point projection to machine, finish machine the cavity in one operation. Again, point projection has a spiral option and we specify a point to project out from, as you can see in the preview, and power mill will project a spiral spherical pattern out from the center point until it hits the cavity surfaces. This will give us a nice continuous spiral operation from the center right out to the edge of the vertical walls of the cavity